Do humans only live once? Can one be resurrected after death? Is resurrection equal to rebirth? To explore these questions, let's first find out the conditions for entering the kingdom of heaven. The Bible often mentions people who are not qualified to enter heaven. Here, we have summarized them into six types. 1. Those who are sinful and unrighteous cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17 Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 to 10 Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. Orgy means indulging in excessive partying, feasting, and drinking. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5 For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure or greedy person, such a man as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. This is the first type of people who can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Number two, those who don't become like little children cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 19 at verse 14. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Children are innocent and pure, like angels before the age of seven. However, as they grow older, greed, anger, 
envy and pride will gradually arise. Number three. Those who put a hand to the plough and look back cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Luke chapter 9 verses 61 to 62. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Looking back means they are still attached to someone or something in the world. They still haven't let go. Luke chapter 17 verses 32 to 33 When Jesus talked about the last days with his disciples, he warned them, Remember Lot's wife. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. This means that we need to forsake this life and follow Christ wholeheartedly. Especially when we are dying, if we still have attachments to wealth, families, fame or status, then we certainly cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, but will have to undergo reincarnation to continue the journey of repentance. However, if we haven't made efforts to let go of these things when we are alive, how can we do that when we are dying? Remember Lot's wife is a Bible story. At that time, this lady's faith became more and more lukewarm, indifferent and disobedient. When the angels came to rescue her, she looked back. She didn't want to forsake the pleasures in this life and cared more about her possessions than God's words. This reflects her faith. In the end, she became a pillar of salt in Sodom. Therefore, only by focusing on the Saviour who sacrificed his life for humanity without distraction, can we resist and reject temptations of this world? This is the third type of people. Number four. Those who haven't experienced many hardships cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Acts chapter 14 verse 22. Paul was strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Humans are born with sins. If one indulges in pleasures without going through hardships, trials and suffering, do you think it's possible for them to eradicate sins and sinful nature and enter the kingdom of heaven? Number five, those whose actions and knowledge don't go hand in hand cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Those who keep calling Lord, Lord, but never follow God's will, cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. This is because even false Christs and false prophets can do things like preaching, casting out demons, and performing miracles. Therefore, our actions and knowledge must go hand in hand. Number six. Those who haven't been reborn of water and the Spirit cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. John chapter 3 verse 5 Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, 
No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Water represents purification. After being purified physically and spiritually, believers attain a rebirth in the Holy Spirit. John chapter 3 verse 3 In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 50 Paul tells the brothers, Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The earthly ones cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, only the spiritual ones can. Romans chapter 14 verse 17 For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. As believers, we shouldn't selectively believe the Bible. Instead, we should believe it completely and understand it comprehensively without feeling contradictory to align with God's will. For the above six points, some people may understand them in an inflexible and superficial way, resulting in misunderstandings. So, now, let's provide some explanations. Usually, Believers believe that humans only live once, which means that there is only one chance to repent on earth and one chance to be saved. If so, then according to these six standards, most people are not qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. Lacking the concept of reincarnation, believers believe that after death, Humans can only wait in the underworld for the final judgment, and the time is uncertain. We believe that God wouldn't arrange things this way. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6 The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. As Christians and Jews know, after death, souls are immortal and souls in the underworld can be brought back by God. Therefore, what is resurrected after death must be the physical body, whereas the resurrection of the body is only possible through reincarnation because the dead body has already decayed. Since God can bring people back to life, why does he let those who died for Christ wait for 2,000 years in the underworld before resurrecting them? God is totally able to make them undergo reincarnation sooner, continue spreading the gospel for Christ, repent and purify their sins and sinful nature. In fact, this is exactly what God does, and it aligns perfectly with the mercy of God and Christ. God can bring us into this world, and similarly, he can also reincarnate our souls, because the dead body has already decayed or been cremated. Being reincarnated in a new body to continue the journey of repentance totally makes sense. Now, let's explore the topic of resurrection. Firstly, we should understand that after Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, the spirituality of humans was only partially blinded, but not completely extinguished. If it were completely extinguished, like animals, it would be impossible to believe in God, to recognize Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, the Saviour, to repent and to attain rebirth by restoring the spiritual body. Therefore, the spirituality of humans hasn't been completely extinguished. Secondly, in the Gospel of Mark it is written, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, 
but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Some believers do believe in God, but they still commit sins such as killing, stealing and adultery. Most believers won't commit these sins, but they still have sinful natures such as envy, pride, greed and anger. Whereas it's impossible to fully restore spirituality through repentance in a single lifetime. As a result, most believers are not qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, according to God's will, in order to be saved, a believer must undergo reincarnation to continue the journey of repentance and practice. As long as you believe in God and are willing to repent, you can be reincarnated after death to continue the journey of repentance until God is pleased and you meet the conditions to enter the kingdom of heaven. After that, there is no need to be reincarnated again or wait in the underworld. This is God's will. Of course, those who don't believe in God may be kind people for now who haven't committed sins such as killing, stealing or adultery in this life, so they won't go to hell after death. Instead, they can be reincarnated as humans. However, after their reincarnation, there are two possibilities. One is that they have an opportunity to encounter a messenger, convert to God, and start to repent, thus embarking on the journey to the kingdom of heaven. As for which lifetime they can enter heaven, it still depends on their own efforts. The other possibility is that they don't have the opportunity to hear the gospel and generate faith. Rather, they still have no faith in God and will eventually fall. When they die, if their sins meet the conditions for going to hell, they will be sent there. They won't be reincarnated as humans or wait for judgment in the underworld. Additionally, there is a group of people who don't meet the conditions of going to heaven or hell, and neither can they be reincarnated as humans in short time. They will wait in the underworld for a while, and the duration depends. Thirdly, what humans call death is just the separation of the soul and the body. The body originally comes from dust. After the soul and the body separate, the body decays and returns to dust. The body cannot be resurrected. However, as long as a living being has spirituality, their soul is immortal. Since souls are immortal, they can only move. Some people say, if a soul goes to hell, isn't it dead? Well, if a soul dies after going to hell, then it no longer has suffering there. Hence, going to hell is a punishment for the soul, but not its death. Since souls are immortal, there is no resurrection for them. It is the body that is resurrected. So, to be resurrected, one needs a new body. To get a new body, one needs parents. Therefore, when Jesus mentioned the resurrection of humans, it must refer to the reincarnation of the soul in a new body with the help of parents. Only when explaining the Bible with the concept of reincarnation can it be comprehensive and coherent without contradictions. This arrangement by God is also the most suitable for humanity. Through this arrangement, souls can be saved. After resurrection, one can continue to repent on earth. Through resurrections again and again, one will eventually meet the conditions to enter heaven. Otherwise, only very few souls can enter heaven after death while most souls will either wait in the underworld for judgment 
for an unknown duration or end up in hell without any chance to come out. This cannot be God's will. The Bible clearly tells us that death and all evils related to death are not created by God. God did not create death, and the death of living beings doesn't delight him. God created all things that can continue and thrive, and his creations are good and beautiful. Even if a soul has gone to hell, it can still be saved. After undergoing punishment in hell, it will eventually be released and reborn as a human. Ultimately, it will have a chance to believe in God, repent and be saved. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 God wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God loves humanity. He would never abandon anyone or let anyone suffer in hell forever. The sins committed by a person are limited, so why send them to eternal punishment? This doesn't make sense and doesn't align with God's will. Even if the earth is destroyed, at the final judgment, the souls in hell, despite being tortured and punished for a very long time, still have a chance because God will create the world and all things again. Though the time is long, these poor souls can still come out from hell, be reborn and continue their journey of repentance until they enter the kingdom of heaven. This is God's ultimate purpose. Fourthly, rebirth is not resurrection. Rebirth is to repent until God is pleased and you meet the conditions to enter heaven and restore the spiritual body so that after death you can enter heaven and attain eternal life. Rebirth is a new birth where the body is no longer the same and the soul is not the same too. Both the body and the soul have undergone a complete and qualitative change. To attain rebirth, we must completely forsake physical pleasures and the pursuit of physical comfort, but seek spiritual purity. In other words, to attain rebirth, we need to forsake this life, completely let go of our physical body, and pursue spiritual purity. Rebirth is not something that occurs after death, rather it should be pursued when we are alive. Of course, even those who are reborn in heaven may still have remaining sins and cannot be completely sinless like Jesus. Therefore, before one's sinful nature is completely eradicated, one still needs to continue repenting in heaven so as to attain eternal life. This makes sense and aligns with God's will.